Okay, welcome to my laboratory. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to do a, another little demonstration of some of the features of the Rigol or Regal uh, DS1054Z. Now I've heard this uh, this name R I G O L pronounced in two different ways. Some demos from the factory, the narrator says Regal, but uh, the Australians say Rigol. I keep wanting to pronounce it Regal myself, but whatever, Regal, Rigal, it's still a great oscilloscope. So right now I have on the I just have, I just have one channel hooked up, and uh, on the screen I have a, a broadband noise source that's coming just from a random coil that I have hooked up across the scope probe. And right now we're looking at this at. Um, 10 milliseconds per division and at uh, 20 millivolts per division this way. And what you see is just a big blob of noise. We have the acquire menu up and we're in the normal acquisition mode with auto memory depth, anti-aliasing off. Now I've found that the auto memory depth basically uh, basically sets the memory up here, memory depth, to the screen width according to whatever time scale you have set. So this little bar up here represents the whole memory depth and it's using the whole uh, width to represent what's on the screen. If I change the memory depth by pushing that menu button and then rolling the multifunction knob to say 24 uh, mega samples then can you see the change that happened up here now the screen is just this much out of the whole 24 mega samples of memory and we have 24 mega points 50 mega samples per second indicated right there so let's just go ahead and leave the memory depth in auto for now. Now we have six million points represented across the whole screen. Okay, and it just looks like like noise because that's what it is. Okay, now I'm going to rotate the uh, horizontal scale knob to give us faster and faster resolutions. That's 5 milliseconds per division, 2 milliseconds per division, 1 millisecond per division, 500 microseconds per division. Oh, and I guess you can see that the hardware frequency counter and the window frequency uh, counter are not stable. So I'm going to continue to rotate the knob uh, 50 microseconds per division ten microseconds, five microseconds two microseconds, one microsecond five hundred nanoseconds fifty nanoseconds, now we're starting to see something that almost looks like a waveform, twenty nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds. I want to turn up the brightness of the screen there. And 5 nanoseconds and uh, parameter limited means when I try to turn it more that's all we've got. 5 nanoseconds is the fastest time base that this scope will allow. Now at 5 nanoseconds you can see that we still have kind of an unstable frequency here and also up here in the hardware frequency counter. And you can see that there's a lot of jitter in amplitude. I'm going to turn the multifunction knob, which is uh, in the default mode of intensity variation. So brighter and brighter and brighter. That's as bright as it'll get. Dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Now you can see that nice almost analog-like 
variable intensity uh, display. But let's leave it to about here. And let's see if we can make sense out of this trace. We're in normal acquisition mode, so I'm going to push that menu button, and now I'm going to change to average mode using the multifunction knob and pressing the multifunction knob to select average mode. Now down here we have the number of averages, so let me turn that down to 2 so you can see how the waveform changes. So in average mode the scope is taking, um, right now it's taking 2 screen refreshes and averaging those together uh, to smooth out some of the noise and jitter in the waveform. And as I rotate the multifunction knob to select more and more averages, if I go up to say 128 averages, you can see that the waveform becomes quite regular now. And we get a much more stable display on the window frequency and voltage. The hardware frequency counter is still kind of unstable. Let's get a few more averages here. 256 is the maximum number of averages. This gives us a nice clean display. Auto memory depth still is on. We're still showing 1 giga sample per second and 60 points. So let's see what happens if we go to a greater number, a greater memory depth. Let's just go all the way to 24 mega points. Now you can see the waveform average build up from kind of a ragged first shot as the averaging sets in. So now you get a good average of the, of the waveform. Still showing 103 megahertz, 36 volts. So now I'm going to press the cursor button and turn the cursors on to manual. And I really like the way these cursors work because, uh, well, right now we have the horizontal cursors selected to be controlled. That's these, the top and bottom ones here. And the source, of course, from channel one. And here are the cursor parameters here, the distances between cursors. So now using the multifunction knob, let's see, can you see right there, there's a little blue up and down arrow. That means that's the cursor that's going to move when I turn the multifunction knob. So turning, turning, turning. Now the neat thing about this is to switch to the other cursor, I just have to press on the multifunction knob. Boom. Now that little blue double arrow is down on the bottom and I can roll it up to the bottom of that waveform. And then here we have BY minus AY is minus 38 millivolts and that tallies with the 38 millivolts measurement there. Now to go to the vertical cursors, the time cursors, I press this button and then I've got the same thing happening now with the two time cursors. The one that's going to move is indicated by little arrows that you can't see because they're underneath this display of the frequency. So that's the one that I'm moving. I'm going to set that right on a peak there. Press it down to move to the next cursor and set that right on a peak there. And then I can read in the cursor window here the 1 over dx, 1 over the change in the x, is 102.0 megahertz. So that's the frequency of one cycle. And that tallies well with what's being shown in the window there. Okay, that's it. Making sense of a noisy waveform by using the average uh, waveform capture, a little bit of uh, the variable intensity display, and the use of the cursors to give you 
um, accurate readouts of the waveform that's being displayed. Thanks for watching.